Edward Ashoff. How did a young, healthy news reporter succumb to the effects of pneumonia? That's what we're talking about today on the channel. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one stop for information on broken bones and orthopedic injuries that's easy to understand for the everyday human. Today, we're talking about pneumonia. And no, this is not an orthopedic injury or a sports injury, but it does involve the death of a well-known sports broadcaster, Edward Ashoff. A number of you have asked me to do a video on this topic, so I did a little bit of research, and today I'm gonna to share with you the results of what I discovered. Edward Ashoff was a 34-year-old ESPN college football reporter. He died after a brief illness. Initial reports are that he died from complications stemming from pneumonia. His death is an untimely tragedy, and I send my condolences to his family, his friends, and to his fiance. So the first question is, what happened to Edward? Edward posted on Instagram on December 2nd that he had contracted pneumonia, but that he was still working. He subsequently tweeted at a later point that he was battling multifocal pneumonia. And this just describes pneumonia that occurs at multiple sites in the lung. His fiance stated that he had been to the emergency department several times to seek medical attention. After his initial diagnosis with pneumonia, he was treated with antibiotics. His symptoms worsened over the following days and he returned to the emergency department for further treatment. On his subsequent visit to the hospital, he was admitted to the intensive care unit and he underwent a barrage of studies to help determine the correct diagnosis. He was eventually treated for a condition known as HLH, hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. Unfortunately, Edward succumbed to his illness after three days in the intensive care unit. To help us understand how this happened, we need to understand a little bit more about pneumonia and the condition from which he eventually succumbed, HLH. Pneumonia is a condition where the alveoli, or the air sacs in the lung, fill with fluid or pus. Pneumonia can be caused by a virus, bacteria, or a fungus. It can occur in one lung, unilateral, both lungs, bilateral, or at multiple sites in the lung, multifocal. And ultimately, pneumonia can cause fever and respiratory problems. Thousands of people perish annually from pneumonia, but usually healthy individuals are able to fight it off with the assistance of antibiotics or antiviral agents. Those most at risk include the young, the elderly, the frail, and the immunocompromised. And this just means people whose immune system is not working properly. So now that we understand what pneumonia is, what is HLH or hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis? That's definitely a mouthful. HLH is basically an unregulated overactivation of the immune system. It's basically a rare disease of the immune system that causes white blood cells to attack other blood cells. And white blood cells are basically those blood cells that carry out the processes of the immune system. Or in other words, white blood cells are those blood cells that attack bacteria, virus, fungal, or other invaders that might try to enter into your body. HLH is a disease that causes enlargement of both the liver and the spleen. It can be inherited in approximately 25% of the cases, or it can be acquired in the remaining 75% of the cases. When acquired, it is usually a result of infections, cancer, or a weakened immune system. Inherited forms of HLH, if left untreated, are typically fatal. Acquired HLH, on the other hand, can clear if appropriately treated. Appropriate treatments include immunotherapy, chemotherapy, antibiotics, antivirals, steroids, and on occasion, stem cell transplants. So now that we understand the difference between pneumonia and HLH, how exactly is it that Edward died from this condition? From the timeline, it appears that Edward initially contracted viral pneumonia. Over the period of a few weeks, this progressed to become multifocal pneumonia. And it is unclear at this point whether the multifocal pneumonia was of a viral etiology or whether it had progressed to a bacterial etiology. And although Edward was treated with antibiotics, 
Regardless, his symptoms progressed. And this may be as a result of one or more potential reasons. One, the causative bacteria was not responsive to the antibiotic that was given. And this may be because either the bacteria was resistant to that antibiotic or that the inappropriate antibiotic was given for the bacteria that was present. Number two, Edward had already developed HLH, at which point the antibiotics alone might no longer have been sufficient for treatment of his symptoms. And number three, Edward might not have had a bacterial infection to begin with. Recall that I said before that pneumonia can be a result of either viral, bacterial, or fungal pathogens. So it's possible that Edward's pneumonia, although initially caused by a viral pathogen, subsequently was caused by a fungal pathogen, which would not respond to treatment with antibiotics. And because fungi are slow growing, it may not have come up on the initial bacterial cultures that would have been taken while he was in hospital. By the time they determined that a fungus might be the causative pathogen, it might already have been too late. Prior to Edward passing, a number of tests were performed, which included a large number of blood tests as well as a bone marrow biopsy. Hopefully, the results of these studies will allow us to better understand how a healthy young man like Edward contracted HLH and subsequently succumb to the effects of this disease. Again, I'd like to offer my condolences to his family, his friends, and to his fiance. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.